Well, in the interest of retaining my sanity, I'll put the cocking rack in place at the top temporarily to hold things in position. I'm holding that with my thumb. Let's get that rack in place. That washer there. This plate in place. Oh, I've got the dreaded mag magnetised screwdriver problem again. Fortunately, I'm holding everything in place with my right hand, so I'm having to fight with the screwdrivers with my left hand. Fight with the magnetised screwdrivers with my left hand, which makes it even worse. Let's see if we can get this screw in position. Okay. All this so I can close up the base of the camera. Okay. Okay. That just moved that rack far back far enough that it was able to uh, cause me grief. Go and crank that back up. There's a block of wood when you want one. There we go. Let's move you closer. We're not seeing anything here. Alright, see if I can hold that back with my left hand this time. Get that rack in position. Put the clamp down on the other end. And stop that rat getting away. It's sitting there. It's tamed. Okay, back where we were. Put this spring back on the capping plate. The other spring is sitting in place. Make sure that spring is tucked down in the body. There's a marvellous habit of wanting to get up out of the way. Here is the frame counter lever. We'll get that hook, that spring hooked where it needs to be hooked. Like that. Everything is tucked in. I've got a base plate here of the front edge nibbled away which can go on here and that'll hold everything in place once it's in position. Here we go. Just 
get one screw here started. Make sure that the frame counter button is connected. Now with the base plate in place, the film advance can't unwind because that tab is held by the base plate. So I'm just putting a few screws in the base plate just to hold it all together. We can put the film advance lever on the camera. And I'll go back up and remove the cocking rack from the top because we want to put that all in place properly. First I've got to check that the film advance mechanism moves smoothly and moves stuff as it should. Get that stuff out of the way. Okay, so press the release lever, swing the film advance, moves through a smooth arc, plenty of uh, strength, rewind for the uh, bringing the Tension on that advance to allow it to return to the rest position. Tighten that, make sure that screw's tight. Okay, that all looks good. Let's just tighten those screws down. Where is their chrome trim plate for the top of the camera? That can go on. That's held in, well it would be held in by the uh, strap lug, but at this camera it doesn't have strap lugs. So it's held down by the bracket. That bracket supports the top cover of the camera. Also has a spring on it which catches the rewind knob. Right, that'll hold the top cover down in position. Let's get this cocking rack in place. So we have our cocking rack here. I'm going to give it a wipe to the underside with some synthetic grease. Some on the teeth don't hurt. And likewise with those teeth there. The position of this one tooth connected and no more. Here's the little support bush for it. I may be too far ahead there, I may have to be right back here. Let's try it there. Put that clamp bracket back in place. Let's see if that'll complete the action. It may be that this thing will hit that chrome trim plate and I'll have to move it back a whole tooth. Yeah, it doesn't want to complete all the way. Let's move it back a tooth. Let's 
slacken that off with my rack back one two. Tighten that back up. Put this bracket in place. Now this is a special screw, it's got a shoulder on it that supports that bush. And this is just a plain countersunk head screw. Film advance appears to be good, everything's working nicely there. So that part's good. I'm going to put a shorter screw in that position so it doesn't foul the transfer shaft when we put it in place. When the camera is complete, the, the bracket for the meter sits under that screw, which brings it up, of course, which would stop it creating any problems. But for the first thing I want to do here is, is put that. Rewind in place, I think. Now yeah, the rewind shaft, it's complicated with these things. You've got the metal piece that goes in the, in the centre. It's got a little tab on it. That tab has to engage with a notch inside here. It's hard to see where the notch is, and if you don't get it engaged with the notch, it looks like it's going to do the job, but it doesn't do the job. And that's exactly what this film rewind was like when we started. It didn't extend out like that because it, the tab wasn't lined up. Now here we have a spring. And here we have the bracket. Make sure that spring is sitting down in that bracket there, it's sitting nicely, get this thing in there, you see any of that, probably saw none of it, don't worry about that, and get the two screws in that hold this in place. They're slightly shorter than the screws that hold that bracket in place. But otherwise look the same. Why does that not want to come up? Uh, that something's not right there. I think that spring must have shifted when I was putting that thing down. And it's now locking things up. Yes, it did exactly what had happened. And it's desperate to cause me grief. So the spring, instead of sitting in its channel where it could move freely, it was clamped underneath where it couldn't move freely. And it's still doing it. Why won't, why won't it stay where it's put? 
All right, I'll bring that all the way up to the top of the stroke. That should hold it. Get the two screws in position and then check to see if, if it works. That's better. That's what it should have been like. Okay. Well, I'll put a little wipe of some synthetic grease on that shaft. That moves nice and smoothly. That's exactly what we want. I think I just hit a file size limit there. So that's in place. We'll, we'll put the centerpiece back up. Is it? We'll put this back in place later in the piece because I'm sure it's going to be falling out otherwise. What have we got done here? Okay, so the film advance is all done. Rewinds in place. Top. All these brackets are in place. Got our temporary base plate on there. This post can go in place. That's the post that supports the top cover. That has a slot in the top, which no one's got a screwdriver wide enough to get into there. I'm just going to use a scalpel blade across there to twist that. That is looking good. Next thing I want to do with this body is put the meter drum in place and the cord, of course. So I'll put the meter drum in place. Just give that a little wipe of synthetic grease underneath. Pop that in place there with its pretty brass shoulder screw. Check that's free to rip. Revolve, that looks good. And the cord I need to get in place. So I'll fish down in here with a piece of wire. Where are we? You pass that wire through here. Hook my cord. and pull it up to the top of the camera. That has to run over the two pulleys here and then wrap around here in the appropriate fashion. Of course I need my drawing. Alright, so the one here on the front roller goes to the bottom here, does a U-turn, runs around the drum what a banging and crashing noises out there oh, it's first rainy day for a while that'll be the neighbors getting their new roof this side of the drum it goes to the top pulley there and to the back there oh nearly got that right there we go top top back back front front all good if you try to do that without having a drawing in front of you you're pretty much doomed to a dismal failure. 
Now I've got to get the cord over these two pulleys, making sure I don't cross them over. That looks good. And then there's a little brass screw post which acts as a keeper. It stops that cord from being able to fall off the pulleys easily. Okay, now I just need to get the, the drum in at the bottom here. So I'm going to lubricate that, put it on the right way round, make sure I've got my cord lengths appropriate. And just for entertainment we'll get this one round at the front, where those notches are round at the front is my start position. Alright, let me get this sorted out. What am I doing here at the bottom? The rear one, the cord at the rear should be the shorter. And it is. And that comes around the drum once. This other one needs to be a bit longer. So this is my front cord. This one goes to the top of the drum. And if I do this right, I'll put some synthetic grease through the centre of that. I want that to sit that way up with its pin at the top. I'm just checking where I need to start that cord. I need to start that cord. This is the front. Have I got these around the right way? I haven't. I've got them around the wrong way. front cord here goes to the top of the drum and it starts on this side. like that. The other cord starts on the other side of this drum. The light's not good here today. If I can get this on right, not like that I won't. Right, let's see if I've done that right. What's well, moving smoothly enough? Got to check very closely to make sure that I haven't got my cord wrapped around the wrong way. Otherwise, it'll move nice and smoothly, except that it, when you connect everything up, everything will be bad. Okay, so that's the right position. That cord at the back goes to the bottom. What have I got it coming to? The bottom. Okay, so I've got it correctly timed, correctly set up. 
that's good and at that position this notch should be right at the front these notches here should be right at the front that there should be sitting at about the 11 o'clock position that should be sitting right at the front now I've got to get my cord trapped in that notch on that drum so I want to mark its position with a marker pen and turn it into position where I can get that cord and loop it back over that post. So where's the pen first of all? Alright, so I'll mark the position of that cord and that drum. So that as I revolve it, I'll be able to see if it slips. If it slips, of course, it won't be in the right place. So if I turn this slowly, we should be good to go. And I just want to bring the notch round to the back here where I can get at that cord easily to move it. And there is about the right place. And it hasn't slipped, so that's all good. Okay, get myself ready here. Got tweezers. I have a toothpick at the ready. Let's see if I can get that cord up and over here. That's one end. Ooh. I don't want to poke at it with anything metal because I don't want to cut the fibre. That's it. That cord's tucked then in there. That means it's firmly fixed, so when I turn this drum at the bottom, the drum at the top must move, and it can't move out of position, or out of time. Right, well I'll put a drop of lacquer on that to lock it in place. And at their new our start position is there with that right at the front. And there I've got my drum, that little stud on the front at about the 11 o'clock position, which is exactly as it should be according to the uh, instructions. Let me put a drop of lacquer on that cord. That's it, that's all that's required. While I've got the lacquer here, I'll put a spot of lacquer on this screw. Okay. Right, well that part's done. With that in position, what's my next move here? Nothing at the moment. I want to get the front of the camera done. I need to get the shutter serviced, get that all ready to go, and then come back and get ready to put the shutter on the front of the cam uh, into the camera body.